All right, we are going to talk about Apex triggers. All right, so get started with Apex triggers. So, first question What are Apex triggers? So, what are these? Basically, a trigger is a piece of code that you write that will get executed every time a DML operation is executed or a DML transaction is executed. What is a DML again? Data Manipulation Language, okay? So when you insert a record or update a record or delete a record, it's a DML, a data manipulation language, right? We agree on that. So you can choose to write a code and define your piece of code, whatever you want to do to execute and you define it before an insert, execute the code or before an update, execute the code or before a delete, execute a code or after after an insert execute the code after an update execute the code after a delete or after an delete okay so before we move on i want to launch my playground my hands-on playground i'm going to launch my developer beginner and Go to our contacts list, for example, here, recently viewed. So Samuel Barn or Carol Ruiz from SFDC Computing. So whenever we go to a record, this is a record, right? A contact record, and the record name is Carol Ruiz. So if I hit to details and I change something here, right? I say 604. Uh, Vancouver number okay I think I need to censor that because you just saw my phone number what if you just decided to call me right so I'm gonna blur that out because <laughs> I don't want a flood of phone calls coming in so let's say it's 444 whatever it is and I hit save right so when I hit save here An execution of the update DML will occur, right? So if I hit save and you have a before update trigger, so if I, I hit here, and if, if you have a before update trigger, right? When I hit save, that before update will execute first. That piece of code will execute first. Once it's saved, it is actually being saved on the Salesforce database. Then the after insert execute. If you define an after insert trigger. So that's how it works. And it will work on any object. However, you want to define it, right? So if you say, hmm, interesting, but when do I use these triggers? Why don't I just use flow and process builder combined together? Well, not everything can be done using process builder combined with flows. So I've prepared a document here. Let me just pop this up. So triggers over process builder. Most of the things you can do with a process builder combined with flow, but some things you cannot do. So the rule of thumb is anything you want to accomplish, say your manager, your boss, whoever asks you to do something, hey, 
can you do this if this happens i want this and this and this to happen or make sure you know whatever the rule is is applied before the records get saved so first you want to do whatever is being asked to be done using a process builder let me just close this if if you're stuck and basically you want to do something but it's not allowing allowing you to then you proceed using a patch trigger which you need to code right so let's see process builders cannot handle before dml it executes after a record has been created so only after it's created or inserted or updated where trigger apex trigger can handle both before and after dml operation right so for example if i go here carol ruiz and if carol ruiz is located not in the vancouver area and the mobile phone number is 604 right you can write an apex trigger before update or before insert saying when you hit save hey this is not a right area code you cannot save this record it looks wrong please double check well you can do that also using a validation rule correct yes that is correct but some validation is a bit complex or complicated right for example you want to validate the saving of this contact record based on an unrelated um, object that is not even linked here right so if your business requirement is getting more complex and you can't do a validation rule or you can't do a process automation using process builder or a flow combined together you will need to use a trigger especially when it's related to a dml right so process builder cannot handle delete and undelete dml where apex can apex trigger can so for example if i delete carol ruiz here if i cancel if i delete here the record right i hit delete you can't do anything with the process builder you can't you simply can't but with apex trigger say you delete and you're going to check whatever you want to check say whoop you cannot delete carol ruiz she is important and she still needs to do blah 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 whatever you cannot delete this record and you can do an add error alert here you say you cannot delete calories because blah 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 you can't do that using workflow plus process builder not workflow flow right so you can't so it is all or none in case of process builder failure why with apex trigger partial success is possible because it's coded you can do the database thingy method right partial success is possible it cannot update unrelated records with process builder with apex you can okay you have to use process builder in conjunction with flows to create custom record sharing with apex you can basically if things gets complex it's a bit complicated you will end up writing a trigger if you try to use a process builder and you are scratching your head and how on earth can i do this i can't then you have to go you know write some triggers so that's the use of triggers so let's go back here all right so now you 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 know when to use it before an insert before an update before a deletion of a record or after all these three the same thing and after an undelete so if you delete and then you go, you go to your recycle bin and you hit undelete you can create a trigger and say oh this record has been undeleted by somebody and whatever you want to do with it you can write it on your code send an email 
or do a whole other bunch of automation, whatever, and then maybe undelete all the record that was linked to that record or however you wanna you wanna decide to 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 write your code. Okay, that's the like pretty much the foundation. You need to get that because just knowing how to use or how to write triggers doesn't help you much because you need you need to know when to actually write a trigger. You don't have to write a trigger every single time because it's more maintenance because you have to write this on a sandbox. Then you have to write a test code for your triggers. Then you have to deploy it on your actual production org. You cannot write a trigger on your production org. You cannot. You have to write a trigger or an Apex class or whatever coding you have on a sandbox. You can only write codes on the sandbox. Then you have to write test codes, make sure your code are okay. Then you deploy those triggers or classes onto your production org. So there's a lot of things going on. A lot of time will be spent, right? And a lot of testing is, is just a lot of consuming uh, work time energy so first things first always try to do with the process combined with the flow if that cannot be done it is impossible to do it then you will start to mm, i need to do a trigger well it can't be done any other way so let's do a trigger all right because when you write a trigger basically it's on your hands it's uh, other developers will need to decipher your code what is this trigger doing? If you just decide to write a bunch of, you know, unreadable code, it will make maintenance of the whole Salesforce org a nightmare <laughs> for somebody else that is. So, so yeah, writing codes are fun, especially when you're like me, a developer. I pretty much like to write everything in code rather than, you know, dragging and clicking and, you know, and then uh, using the flow and everything else is more efficient I, I see and it's more snappy it's more fast it's actually more problem free from my thinking because when you run a flow and a process as a, a, a whole other discussion it, it it trips more often you know it trips with errors here and there way more often than you just write a clean code it just works it just works and works and works but if you do process and flows and just things like gets tangled up together and it just trips, you know, more often. That's my experience. Anyways, it depends how on what your preference because um, I mean, uh, a developer background way like over 20 years now since my teenage years. So I'm just more comfortable writing codes rather than, you know, dragging stuff and deciding to, to you know, build stuff with that but salesforce always prefers us to do point and click development if that cannot be done then you do your coding okay i hope that makes sense that needs to be said so you know what is triggers and when you can use it all right let's do some examples now so we are going to go through these examples which doesn't make sense really but why do I say it doesn't make sense? Because all this, most of the examples here you can done you can do with process and flows together. You don't need right code, but this is just to get your head around how to write a trigger when you actually need it, right? When you actually need it, you would need to know how to actually do it. So we're going to go through these examples and Basically, the goal is for you to know how to write a, a, a trigger, right? So let's do this. Types of triggers. We discussed about that a bit. The before triggers, before the records was saved. So before, if I, if I add a mobile number, before I hit the save button. Well, after I hit the save button, but before it gets saved, before it actually gets saved, it's going to run all your before trigger code. Then after it gets saved, it will run all your after update 
code if you have any if you don't have any then it's gonna do nothing right so let's go back to our trailhead here so before triggers and after triggers so using context variable all right this is pretty important when you write triggers you have to know there's a trigger dot old context variable and trigger dot new what are the difference trigger dot old as the name suggests is the old data okay so if i go back to carol ruiz and this is the trigger dot old whatever you see here this is trigger dot old the data is this one whatever you see here and all the the fields that's not displayed but the old data this is trigger dot old but once you click on something you want to add email right like bam at bomb.com this email will reside on trigger dot new trigger dot old doesn't have bam at bomb.com why because it wasn't there before now we're actually adding this this is the new data right that makes sense right so this is the old phone number well trigger dot old phone value is this and then trigger dot new phone would be this this is trigger dot new trigger dot old right trigger dot new old new old <laughs> you got that right so trigger dot old is the old values before you change anything and then trigger dot new will contains all the new values what on earth is that for so you can play with the data on your code for example well if the old data is this and this and this and that then do this but if the new data so you can you can you can do comparison or however you want to code it basically if you want to access the value of the old data this is the trigger dot old right and then you change something you add something you change something this is trigger dot new you can access these values on trigger dot new that's that's pretty important right so um this is how you write a trigger trigger what's the name of the trigger hello world hello hello world trigger on what object on a count when would you like to execute this trigger before an insert please or you can decide a whole bunch you do this before an insert after an insert and after a delete then you define this chunk of code right process if it's an insert and it's before else if the trigger is after after an insert execute this chunk of code else if trigger is delete execute this chunk of code all right so that's basically how you write triggers this is the shell and just go fun with it you know just you know have fun <laughs> hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the salesforce app exchange and do yourself a favor like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom <laughs>